Hello viewers, uh, we will begin this course uh, with a review of uh, the complex number system and then uh, we will proceed to study the geometry and, uh, and then the topology of the complex plane uh, from where uh, we will start the study uh, of complex functions uh, which constitutes uh, the study of complex analysis. So, firstly uh, let us uh, review uh, the complex number system. Okay. So, here is a review of the complex number system. So, in here uh, what we are going to do is uh, take an uncritical uh, approach uh, to the complex number system. That is, uh, we are going to assume that the uh, complex number system is given to us and uh, we will only review the mechanics of how to multiply two complex numbers, add them uh, uh, etcetera and you know, subtract them and divide them uh, etcetera. Okay. And then we will see some properties of modulus and uh, the conjugation uh, of a complex number etcetera. Okay. So, let me first uh, uh, start with a complex number. Okay. So, a complex number is specified by uh, a complex number is specified by an ordered pair of real numbers a comma b. So, an ordered pair a comma b gives rise to a complex number uh, a plus i b okay, and is written as a plus i b, okay, where uh, this i here stands for the square root of uh, minus 1. Okay. So, i stands for the square root of minus 1. Okay. So, the complex number system provides for an entity uh, which uh, acts as the square root of minus 1, which is not available in the real number system and that we denote by i uh, and given an ordered pair of real numbers, uh, we talk of a complex number uh, a plus b i. Okay. So, uh, we can uh, I mean we can readily uh, take any uh, example like that uh, 3 plus 2 i is a complex number okay, and uh, 22 uh, pi plus i root 2 is also a complex number. Okay. So, uh, such things uh, we will call as complex numbers and uh, two complex numbers are equal a plus uh, i b and c plus i d okay, are equal if and only if uh, a is equal to c and uh, b is equal to d. Okay. So, um, okay. and so in particular, okay. so uh, in particular a plus i b okay, need not be equal to a plus or uh, b plus i a. Okay. And that is why the order of in which this pair is given, this pair A, B is given is important and hence we said that a complex number is specified by an ordered pair. Okay. So, uh, if A and B are not equal, A plus I B is not going to be equal to B plus I A uh, by this uh, statement here. Okay. So, um, once again uh, I am not going to give any justification here. Uh, we are uh, only doing a review of the complex number system. Okay. So, uh, I will I will uh, pause here to mention that uh, a good reference to a critical approach uh, as to why these rules for complex number uh, arithmetic arose. Uh, I will uh, refer the viewer to uh, the book by 
uh, Tristan Needham, visual complex analysis by Tristan Needham is a very good reference. Uh, so, there uh, a, a historical uh, perspective is presented where um, the evolution of these uh, arithmetic of complex numbers is traced uh, and uh, also uh, a justification for why uh, the complex number system uh, has uh, risen okay, uh, is provided. Okay. So, uh, now we will owing to this earlier fact here, okay, what we can do is we will define uh, the uh, real part of a complex number. A plus I B as uh, A okay, and the imaginary part of uh, A plus I B as uh, B. Okay. So, uh, often they are abbreviated as a real part of uh, A plus I B and uh, imaginary part i m of a plus i b okay and uh, okay so those are a and b okay so this definition is unambiguous because uh, of the fact that a plus i b and c plus i d are equal if and only if a is equal to c and b is equal to d okay and uh, often uh, we use uh, symbols like uh, or alphabet Z, W, uh, Zeta, etcetera to uh, denote uh, a complex number. Okay, so that's a uh, just a symbol. Okay, and then um, what we can also do is. Uh, we can represent since a complex number is specified by uh, a pair of uh, real numbers a comma b we can also represent the complex numbers on uh, the cartesian plane on the xy plane like that okay so if this is the xy plane uh, an ordered pair ab for the time being let us assume a and b are positive uh, real numbers okay so the point a comma b falls in the first uh, quadrant and uh, this height uh, is your uh, b okay so, and then this uh, distance from the y axis is a okay so this is the point a on the x axis and this is the point b on the y axis okay and uh, so a is, is the real part of a plus ib and b is the imaginary part okay so owing to this fact this is called the real axis and this is called the imaginary axis. Okay. So, uh, the y coordinate gives the imaginary part. Okay. So, if x x comma y, okay. so x comma y uh, belongs to uh, the plane okay. uh, corresponds to the complex number x plus i y. Okay. And so, uh, the x coordinate uh, the x coordinate okay, represents the real part okay. and the y coordinate represents the imaginary part. The imaginary part of a complex number. Okay, when uh, represented on the plane. Okay. And we will uh, call this plane as the complex plane. So, we will uh, call this plane the complex 
plane often. Okay. Um, this was introduced by the mathematician uh, Argand and uh, this is also called the Argand diagram or the Argand plane. We often uh, denote the set of all complex numbers by uh, this kind of C okay. uh, and um, C is the set of all complex uh, numbers. It is the set of all A plus B i such that uh, A comma B are real numbers. Okay. So, uh, and since and there is no repetition in writing a plus b i a comma b belongs to r, because a plus b i uh, is equal to c plus d i if and only if a equals c and b equals d. Okay. So, uh, that is the set of uh, complex numbers, okay. the set of all complex numbers. Okay. Okay. So, please note that uh, we write a complex number as a plus b i, I also uh, write it as a plus i b. Okay. So, they are one and the same. Okay. I interchangeably use a plus uh, b i and a plus i b. Okay. So, to this um, end, uh, what we will do is we will uh, make the following table a complex number. Okay. And uh, we will use many short forms from time to time. So, uh, here is a, a small table uh, where I will write a complex number in its short form. Okay. So, a number of the form a plus i times 0 okay, uh, is often written just a. Okay. So, if I just write a real number a and call it a complex number, I am referring to the complex number a plus i times 0. Okay, this is a short form and uh, a number of the form 0 plus i times b is often written as uh, i b or b i. Okay. Like I said, uh, I am going to uh, write i b or b i uh, okay, in that form okay. and then uh, 0 plus i times 1 uh, is often written as uh, i simply. Okay. This is a specific complex number. Okay. So, this is not a number of the form, but it is a specific complex number, I write it as i. 0 plus i times minus 1 as minus i and uh, a number of the form a plus i times minus b is often written as a minus i b. Okay. By that I mean a plus uh, i times minus b, where I mean b is uh, that is for the time being assume it is a, a positive real number. Uh, then I write this way. Okay. And then, uh, so these short forms should be noted and we will use them from uh, time to time. Okay. Uh, so, one should know what uh, the short form uh, represents. Okay. So, uh, we identify uh, a, a real number x. Uh, with the complex number x plus i times 0. Okay. So, for the time being uh, uh, okay, this plus and dot okay, are only symbols. So, far I have not made any sense of it. I only told that a complex number is represented as uh, a plus i b. So, they are just symbols for the time being. Okay. Later, we will introduce operations on, uh, uh, we will review the operations on complex numbers, uh, namely complex multiplication and complex addition. And then we will see that uh, uh, these uh, indeed are the complex addition and multiplication. Okay. So, uh, for now it is just a, a symbol and then uh, x plus i times 0 will represent a real number x okay. and uh, we identify the real numbers with these kind of complex numbers okay, which uh, in turn have a short form uh, x. Okay. So, note this short form a number of the form uh, x plus i times 0 uh, is written as x. Okay. So, notice that uh, the real numbers uh, are not uh, technically uh, the complex numbers uh, x plus i times 0. 
Okay. But we identify the real numbers uh, as being contained uh, in the complex numbers and this identification is uh, faithful in the sense that uh, later when we introduce the operations of complex number addition and complex number multiplication, we see that the real number multiplication and the real number uh, addition okay, uh, tally uh, with the complex number multiplication and complex number addition uh, when we consider numbers of the form x plus i times 0. Okay. So, in that sense the representation of a real number x as the complex number x plus i times 0 uh, is faithful. Okay. But for now we identify uh, these numbers that way okay. and also in this sense okay, the, uh, the set of real numbers are contained in C okay, in the form. Uh, in the form of the set a plus i times 0 like I pointed out such that a belongs to R okay, uh, contained in set of all a plus i b such that a comma b belong to R. This is the set of complex numbers. Okay. Uh, and then numbers of the form i b uh, will be called purely imaginary numbers okay the numbers of the form 0 plus ib are denoted by ib or bi and uh, we will call them uh, purely imaginary numbers okay uh, because there is no real part to this numbers okay so i want to once again uh, pause here uh, to mention that uh, there is nothing imaginary about uh, complex numbers. Okay. So, it is only that history has given the name imaginary to them uh, and then uh, that name somehow got stuck, but uh, there is nothing imaginary they are as concrete as real numbers okay. and uh, there is a, a definite arithmetic to it, there is a definite uh, uh, rules of arithmetic uh, and then uh, they have uh, further properties as we will see. Okay. So, uh, that uh, you should uh, remember is only a historical uh, thing. So, that uh, yeah, that imaginary numbers is just a historical thing okay. and uh, numbers of the form i b will be called uh, purely imaginary okay. and then uh, let us review the rules of uh, addition complex number addition uh, multiplication uh, etcetera. Okay. So, addition or subtraction is as follows uh, a number uh, 1 plus 3 i for example okay, can be added to a number 4 plus 2 i okay, as follows. So, this is the complex number addition, okay, addition we are adding a complex number 1 plus 3 i to the complex number 4 plus 2 i. Uh, in, the, uh, in the intuitive way we will add 1 plus 4, okay, this is real number addition. because the real part uh, is a real number okay, and then um, plus i times. Okay. So, once again this times is, uh, is an artificial thing, okay. it is just a uh, notation for now okay. plus i times 3 plus 2. So, you add the imaginary parts okay, which are uh, once again real numbers. So, this addition is real number addition. to get uh, 5 plus uh, 5 i or i i times 5. Okay. So, that is uh, the addition you add x 1 a number complex number z 1 equals x 1 plus i y 1 uh, to uh, uh, complex number x 2 plus i y 2 to get x 1 plus x 2 plus i times y 1 plus y 2. Okay. So, that is your rule uh, for addition okay. and then uh, subtraction is similar. Okay. 
Okay. Subtraction is similar 1 plus 3 i okay. uh, minus 4 plus 2 i is uh, 1 minus 4 you subtract uh, in the proper order uh, one real number from the other plus i times 3 minus 2 which gives you uh, minus 3 plus i. Okay. So, uh, z 1 minus z 2 is x 1 minus x 2 um, plus i times y 1 minus y 2. Okay. And uh, <coughs> there is complex number multiplication. You can multiply two complex numbers uh, z 1 and z 2 okay, uh, in the following manner. So, normally if you treat these two as binomials two complex numbers 1 plus 3 i uh, times 4 plus 2 i. Okay. So, that is a complex multiplication. Okay. That is 1 times 4 okay. uh, plus 3 i times 2 i okay, plus 3 i times 4 okay, plus uh, 2 i times 1. So, this is like a, a binomial a multiplication okay. and then um, this in turn if we treat these as uh, uh, real numbers and multiply 1 times 4 gives us 4 okay. and then uh, plus let us collect this uh, these two terms here. Okay. We get uh, i times uh, intuitively uh, what we should uh, do is uh, well. Uh, at least uh, by the binomial multiplication what we should do is this is 12 uh, plus 2 namely 14 uh, plus 3 i times 2 i should give us uh, 6 i square. Okay. But i was the entity which was the square root of minus 1. So, i square should be minus 1. So, using i square equals minus 1 uh, what we get is since i square is minus 1 we get 4 plus i times 14 and then substituting i square is minus 1 we get minus 6 here. So, this should be minus 2 uh, plus 14 i. Okay. So, uh, yeah. so, using this what we will do is we will multiply two complex numbers z 1 and z 2 as x 1 uh, x 1 x 2 minus y 1 y 2 okay, where z 1 is like this z 1 is x 1 plus i y 1 z 2 is x 2 plus i y 2. So, uh, we have the following rule x 1 x 2 minus y 1 y 2 plus i times x 1 y 2 plus x 2 y 1. Okay, so, that is your complex number multiplication. Okay. So, uh, then we can also divide complex numbers division. Okay. So, what we can do is uh, if we have z 2 is not 0. So, we can divide only when we have z 2 not 0 z 1 by z 2. Okay. Uh, is x 1 plus i y 1 divided by x 2 plus i y 2 okay, uh, is equal to well uh, z 2 is not 0 uh, recall is this I mean what this means is neither I mean x 2 and y 2 are not simultaneously 0 okay, x 2 and y 2 are not simultaneously 0 one of them can be, but not both, because the complex number 0 is 0 plus i times 0, okay, which we are abbreviating as 0. Okay. And then um, x 1 plus i y 1 divided by x 2 plus i y 2 uh, can be rewritten as x 1 plus i y 1 times 
Well, you will see in a moment why I am doing the following. Okay. I will multiply by x 2 minus i y 2 in the numerator and the denominator. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, this gives me x 1 x 2 uh, plus y 1 y 2 okay, uh, plus i times x 1 uh, y 2 uh, sorry uh, plus i times x 2 y 1 minus x 1 y 2 okay, and in the denominator I get x 2 squared okay, and then uh, minus x 2 y 2 i and plus x 2 y 2 i cancel. So, I get uh, plus uh, okay, and i times minus i gives me plus 1. So, I get plus y 2 square. Okay. So, using complex number multiplication on uh, these two, okay, when I multiply them I get uh, x 2 square plus y 2 square. Okay. So, uh, then we can uh, divide this into its real and imaginary parts x 1 x 2 plus y 1 y 2. Uh, divided by x 2 squared plus y 2 squared uh, plus i times x 2 y 1 minus x 1 y 2 uh, divided by x 2 squared plus y 2 squared. Okay. So, uh, we, we are now able to write uh, z 1 by z 2 in the form a plus i b uh, by using this rule uh, by using this process. Okay. So, um, uh, notice that z 1 by z 2 when z 2 is not 0 is already a complex number. Okay. There is nothing more one needs to do. All we are trying to do is put it in the form a plus b i, uh, which is how we said we are going to represent a complex number. Okay. So, uh, so this is your uh, rule for uh, division of two of a complex number z 1 by a non 0 complex number z. Okay. So, these are the rules for uh, addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication and division okay? and they have the following uh, properties. They follow the following properties, which might be familiar to the viewer from an earlier uh, course on complex numbers. Uh, so, uh, firstly z 1 plus z 2 okay, uh, is equal to um, z 2 plus z 1. Okay. And likewise, second uh, z 1 times z 2 is equal to z 2 times z 1. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, this pro these two properties are called uh, commutativity. Okay. So, uh, the commutative property of addition and multiplication. Okay. So, not say that. Okay. So, once again let me uh, let me uh, go back to these rules and point out to the viewer that uh, this addition etcetera. Okay, I will not point out, but I will not uh, put a pointer there, but this addition which appears here or this addition which appears here uh, which, uh, which tells the rule okay, uh, are real number addition which, uh, okay, additions which the viewer is already familiar with and this addition here is telling you how to add to complex numbers z 1 and z 2. Okay. And likewise, uh, this multiplication here is the new complex number multiplication okay. and then this uh, multiplication here or this multiplication here or this subtraction etcetera, this multiplication here, this addition, this multiplication, they are all uh, real number uh, multiplications, additions and subtractions, which the viewer is already uh, familiar with from uh, real numbers. Okay. So, we are trying to define a complex number multiplication in terms of uh, real number addition, multiplication and subtraction etcetera. Likewise, for division uh, the operations which appear here uh, in this here okay, uh, within the real part or the imaginary part of z 1 by z 2 are real number operations, which one is already familiar with. Okay. So, having said that. Um, uh, these properties pertain to complex number addition and multiplication. So, uh, so they are they are both uh, the complex number uh, addition and multiplication are uh, commutative. Okay. And uh, secondly, three uh, z one plus z two plus z three. 
So, if you add z 2 to z 3 and then add z 1 to it, it is the same as adding z 1 and z 2 first and then adding z 3 to it. Okay. And so is the case for multiplication, if you multiply z 2 and z 3 first and then multiply z 1 to it, it gives the same result as multiplying z 1 and z 2 first and then multiplying z 3. And uh, so, these kind 3 and 4 are called associative uh, properties uh, for, multi for addition and multiplication respectively. Okay. And um, 5 uh, z 1 times z 2 plus z 3. Okay. So, multiplication uh, distributes over addition. So, z 1 times z 2 plus z 3 is the same as z 1 times z 2 plus z 1 times z 3. Okay. Uh, notice that uh, addition does not distribute over multiplication. Okay. So, um, so it is not true that z 1 plus z 2 times z 3 is z 1 plus z 2 times z 1 plus z 3. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, multiplication distributing over addition and then uh, if z plus z is a plus i b or x plus i y, okay, let us say a, a plus i b, okay, then uh, minus z represents a complex number. Okay. So, this is a uh, notation minus z stands for the complex number minus a uh, minus i b. Okay. So, uh, then uh, z plus minus z notice is uh, 0. Okay. And um, it is true that z minus z is actually minus 1 uh, times the complex number minus 1. So, it is minus 1 plus i times 0. Okay times uh, the complex number z. Okay. So, uh, so that minus z uh, although I said is denoted by uh, a plus uh, minus a minus i b, okay. it stands for the complex number minus a minus i b, it is true that minus z is minus 1 times z. Okay. And then uh, seventh one, uh, if, if z is a plus i b, then 1 by z uh, is your complex number a by a squared plus uh, b squared. Well, you want z non-zero. Okay. Then 1 by z uh, is the complex number a, a by a squared plus b squared minus i times b by b squared plus uh, a squared plus b squared. Okay. So, it is the division of the complex number 1 by the complex number z okay. and then z times 1 by z uh, is equal to 1. Okay. So, this so, there are uh, okay, these are inverse properties, there is an additive inverse and then there is a multiplicative inverse to complex no, non-zero complex numbers. Okay. So, uh, additive inverse exists for any complex number and then multiplicative inverse exists for non-zero complex numbers. Okay. And uh, you see that with these properties and uh, with these rules for uh, addition multiplication uh, you know subtraction and division that um, when you when you restrict these operations to numbers of the form x plus i times 0 such that x belongs to r okay like i remarked earlier when you restrict these operations to uh, this set contained in the complex numbers okay uh, you get all, you retrieve all your real number operations Okay. So, uh, this set indeed uh, faithfully represents uh, your real numbers uh, contained in the complex number set. Okay. So, um, so, owing to that fact, okay, um, you call these numbers uh, notice are represented on the x axis. right? these are all numbers whose imaginary part is 0. So, uh, these are represented on the uh, x axis in the uh, complex plane. So, this is uh, called as the real axis sometimes, okay? because uh, the numbers on it, the complex numbers uh, on the x axis uh, represent the real numbers 
contained in the complex numbers. Okay. And the purely imaginary uh, numbers uh, are on the y axis okay, uh, in the x y plane. So, this is uh, this axis is sometimes called the imaginary axis, because uh, the numbers on it are purely imaginary. Okay. And uh, now, notice uh, another thing, okay, another thing about this uh, multiplication okay, uh, that or uh, these rules about addition and multiplication uh, that a number a plus i b. Okay, we have started by representing a complex number in this fashion. Okay, this is indeed the complex number a, okay, which is the uh, I mean uh, plus i times 0. Okay, uh, plus the complex number i okay, times the complex number b plus i times 0. Okay. So, now this is a symbolism, okay, it is the representation of a complex number in the form a plus i b okay, and this is the genuine plus now, this is the complex number addition okay, and this is the complex number multiplication. When you multiply the complex number i, which is 0 plus i times 1, okay, that is again a notation okay, and you multiply that to the complex number b plus i times 0, okay, uh, complex number multiplication and then add it uh, with the complex number rules to a plus i 0, you get back your complex number i a plus i times b. Okay. So, uh, in that sense, this plus and that uh, dot uh, represent your complex uh, addition and multiplication. Okay. And from uh, now on, we will uh, suppress uh, you know uh, this being a, a symbol, okay. we will consider them as genuine complex number addition and multiplication um, in this sense. So, now we are going to uh, look at uh, the conjugation. Uh, of a complex number. Okay. So, uh, notice that a plus i b well uh, notice first that uh, minus i squared is also equal to uh, minus 1 and so minus i could have equally done the job uh, as uh, i did. Okay. So, uh, with that as motivation we will look at a plus i b transforming itself as a minus i b. Okay. So, we could have uh, started off by uh, a parallel definition or specification of a complex number as a minus i b instead of a plus i b. Okay. So, uh, owing to that motivation what we would do is we define uh, okay, so definition the conjugate of a complex number. z equals a plus i b okay, is the complex number a minus i b and uh, and is denoted by z bar. Okay. So, z given a complex number z, z bar stands for the conjugate of the complex number. Okay. And uh, for example, given a complex number, all you have to do to find its conjugate is uh, just reverse the sign on the uh, imaginary part. Okay. So, 3 minus i and then uh, 1 plus okay, or 1 minus pi by 4 i conjugate is just 1 plus pi by 4 i. And we will see some properties of this conjugation. Okay. So, firstly the conjugate of a conjugate is uh, the complex number itself. Okay. So, that is because if you reverse the sign on the imaginary part twice, okay, you get back the complex number. Okay. And um, the second property is that conjugation 
distributes over addition. Okay. So, uh, z 1 plus z 2 bar is z 1 bar plus z 2 bar okay. and uh, third z 1 z 2 bar the conjugate if you multiply to complex numbers and then you take the conjugate it is the same as taking the conjugate of the complex numbers z 1 and z 2 first and then multiplying them. Okay. So, uh, the viewer is encouraged to uh, verify these properties uh, by, uh, by computing the left hand side and right hand side in terms of uh, x 1 y 1 and x 2 y 2. So, let me take z 1 is x 1 plus i y 1 okay, and z 2 equals x 2 plus i y 2. Okay. So, z 1 uh, plus z 2 is x 1 plus x 2. Okay, plus i times y 1 plus y 2. Okay. So, that is the uh, complex number addition rule. Okay. So, z 1 plus z 2 bar is going to be the conjugate of this complex number which is x 1 plus x 2 minus i times y 1 plus y 2. Okay. And then uh, z 1 bar is z 1 is x 1 plus i y 1. So, z 1 bar is x 1 minus i y 1 and z 2 bar is x 2 minus i y 2. Okay. So, z 1 bar plus z 2 bar is the addition of these two complex numbers which gives you x 1 plus x 2 uh, minus i times y 1 plus y 2. It is plus i times minus y 1 plus minus y 2 which is the same as uh, minus i times y 1 plus y 2. Okay. So, um, so, now you see that this tallies with this. Okay. So, uh, z 1 plus z 2 bar is equal to z 1 bar plus z 2 bar. Okay. So, it is likewise routine to verify uh, 3 and 1. Okay. So, you can just take z 1 is x 1 plus i y 1, z 2 is x 2 plus i y 2 and uh, perform the operations uh, in the proper order and verify 1 and 3. So, the real part of uh, a complex number z is uh, equal to uh, the sum of the complex number with its conjugate divided by 2. Okay. So, that gives you the real part and likewise the imaginary part of a complex number z is z minus z bar uh, by 2 i. Okay. So, you can retrieve the real and imaginary parts of a complex number uh, from a from a complex number and its conjugate. Okay. And, um, and on the complex plane, uh, this conjugate is just the reversal of the sign on the imaginary part. Okay. So, if you take a complex number a comma b, okay, uh, then the complex number a comma minus b lies right here. Okay. So, it lies uh, or it is the reflection of the complex number a comma b uh, via uh, the x axis. So, when you reflect the point a b uh, uh, through the x axis. Okay. So, this distance is of course, b and this uh, depth now is b. This is minus b. Okay. So, uh, this distances are equal and uh, you have a comma minus b. Okay, so, that is the representation of a conjugation in the complex uh, plane. Okay. So, that is telling you that well it is also clear from the definition that if you reflect a point on the x axis uh, through the x axis you get back a, this very same point. So, the, uh, the conjugation of a uh, real number in the complex plane okay, is the uh, is the real number itself. Okay. So, the conjugate of x plus i times 0 is uh, x itself okay. is x minus i times 0 which is x. Okay. So, conjugate of a complex number is equal to itself if and only if 
okay uh, it is a real number by that i mean it's a real number contained in the complex number system okay so we will often call uh, the numbers of the form x plus i times 0 as real numbers because we will call this real numbers. Okay, uh, that is because we saw that uh, th the set of all x plus i times 0 is a faithful representation of real numbers in the complex numbers. Okay. So, uh, from now on we are uh, when we say real number in the context of complex numbers this is what we mean. Okay. And then um, the conjugate is equal to itself if and only if it is a real number. I have shown here that if you take a real number it is equal to its conjugate okay. and then um, here from here you can Im infer that if uh, a complex number is equal to its conjugate. So, the imaginary part is 0. Okay. What that means is it is a real number. Okay. So, it is an if and only if statement. Okay. So, now uh, let us look at uh, the complex plane again okay. and uh, let us recall that uh, in coordinate geometry we can uh, represent uh, okay, points in the plane also by using uh, polar coordinates. Okay, so, let us say x and y instead of a and b does not matter. Okay. So, using polar coordinates we had a representation of this point as uh, r comma theta okay, where r refers to the length of this vector okay, this is r okay, which starts at the origin and uh, well ends at this point x comma y it is the length of that line segment and theta was the angle of opening with the positive x axis. Okay. So, uh, in polar coordinates recall uh, we could represent uh, we can represent a point uh, x comma y okay, uh, as uh, r comma theta okay, where uh, where x and y satisfy the equations x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sin theta. Okay. So, or if you want to go from x y to r theta, uh, r is given by uh, square root of x square plus y square. As you can see from here, uh, okay, r is the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. Okay, this height is uh, y and this is x. Okay. So, r squared is x square plus y square or r is square root of x square plus y square and uh, theta the angle of opening is given by from this right angle triangle again by tan inverse of y by x. Okay. And this works more uh, generally even if the point is in, uh, in the other quadrants okay, or even if the point is on uh, is on the imaginary axis okay, where x is 0. Okay. So, there you have to uh, make the appropriate uh, adjustments okay. and uh, theta is not defined for for uh, 0. For the complex number 0, there is a degenerate triangle. So, uh, this formula would not work. Okay. There r is simply 0 okay, that represents uh, the complex number 0. Okay. For non-zero complex numbers, we have r is this and theta is tan inverse of y by x okay. uh, except for when x is 0. When x is 0 depending upon the sign of y, you decide whether y is pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2. Okay. And um, that was polar coordinates okay. and likewise we have a polar representation. So, owing to this uh, we have a polar representation of a complex number.
okay, as uh, x plus i y as uh, r cosine theta plus i times r sin theta. Okay. For 0, we make an exception, we just say r is 0, for 0, uh, r is just 0. Okay. And then um, here, r is equal to square root of um, x squared plus y squared like above. Okay. of uh, the complex number x plus i y okay, and uh, theta is called an argument. of uh, the complex number x plus i y. Okay. So, notice that there is a certain uh, lack of uniqueness when you go from uh, the rectangular coordinates to the polar coordinates. Okay. So, uh, by that I mean theta uh, can be more than uh, just uh, one angle. Okay, because cosine and sine are 2 pi periodic. Okay, um, so, uh, any given one value of theta between 0 and 2 pi, okay, uh, any uh, addition of integral multiple of 2 pi uh, to that angle uh, still satisfies uh, x equals uh, r cosine theta and y equals uh, r sin theta. Okay. So, there is that lack of uniqueness. So, um, the argument. So, owing to this the argument of a complex number okay, x plus uh, i y, okay, uh, we define this only for non zero not equal to 0. Okay, uh, write it in one way is the set of all theta naught plus 2 n pi such that uh, theta naught 0 less than or equal to theta naught less than 2 pi. Okay. So, I will take the uh, interval 0 comma 2 pi closed at 0 open at 2 pi okay, and uh, n belongs to z okay, and uh, x equals r cosine theta naught and y equals r sin theta naught okay, for some r. Here r is unimportant for now okay, that we know is already the modulus of the complex number, but the set of all such theta naught plus 2 n pi will be called the argument of a complex number. Okay. So, um, uh, generally when we say the argument of a complex number, we mean uh, this particular set. Okay, which is uh, the 2 n pi additions to uh, the angle between 0 and 2 pi, which can be uh, which can be retrieved from this expression tan inverse of y by x, where uh, the complex number is x plus i y. Okay. So, uh, but when we say n argument of a complex number, we pick one value okay, uh, from the set and that we generally tend to say is n argument of a complex number. Uh, also, um, this many valuedness of uh, this argument we will see um, has deeper consequences. Um, uh, we will see that uh, during the uh, during this course. Okay. Theta naught when restricted to the interval 0 uh, to pi is uh, commonly referred to as uh, the principal argument. of a complex number. Okay. Uh, x plus i y once again not equal to 0. So, for 0 we do not uh, define the argument okay. and then uh, we will see some properties of uh, the modulus. Okay. So, we will continue the discussion about argument. Uh, further on in this course. Okay. Uh, there are properties of the modulus that we will see. Uh, modulus of z has a geometric meaning, it, ha it is the distance of the point a comma b or x comma y from the origin 
Okay. So, modulus of z uh, I did not probably I just say r is called the modulus of the complex number x plus i y okay, z equals x plus i y and is denoted by the mod z. Okay. So, uh, it reminds the viewer uh, of the absolute value of a real number okay, and it tallies with the notion of an absolute value of a real number. Okay. So, um, by abuse of notation uh, uh, by abuse of uh, terminology I might sometimes say uh, absolute value of z instead of modulus of z I, by that I mean uh, the modulus of z okay. and then uh, the modulus of z satisfies the following properties uh, modulus of z is the distance uh, of in the plane. Okay. of the complex number z from the point 0. This is the usual Euclidean distance okay. and then the modulus of z 1 minus z 2 then okay, is uh, the distance in the plane okay, of the complex number z 1 from the complex number z 2. or vice versa and uh, the modulus of real part of z the third property is that this is less than or equal to the modulus of z. Okay. Uh, that is clear because the square root of x squared plus y squared uh, anyway dominates uh, the value x itself okay. that is the modulus and that is greater than or equal to x itself. Okay. So, uh, that is that and likewise it is also greater than or equal to y. So, the modulus the absolute value of imaginary z is less than or equal to the modulus of z. Okay. I apologize this is the absolute value real and imaginary parts of a complex number are uh, real numbers. Okay. So, the absolute value of real or the imaginary part of z are less than or equal to the modulus. The fourth of the properties is that uh, the multiplication of a complex number by its conjugate gives the square of its modulus. Okay. So, this is an exercise please verify this multiply number with its conjugate and then try to show that it is equal to the square of the uh, modulus. Okay. And the fifth and uh, one important property of modulus is the triangle inequality okay. and this says that the modulus of z 1 plus z 2 is less than or equal to the modulus of z 1 plus the modulus of z 2 and equality holds. if and only if z 1 and z 2 okay, uh, lie on the same line passing through the origin. In the complex plane Okay. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of the argument, this says that z1 and z2, the arguments of z1 and z2 differ by uh, uh, integral multiple of 2 pi. Okay. So uh, only then uh, the equality holds. So if and only if uh, statement. Okay. So this equality holds here in this inequality if and only if the argument of z1 and z2 differ by 2 n pi. Okay. So, um, a proof is easy. Okay. So, a proof of this fact is easy. I will only prove the inequality and the equality part I will leave it as an exercise to the viewer. The modulus of z 1 plus z 2 squared is equal to the by the previous property it is equal to the product of the complex number z 1 plus z 2 with its conjugate okay. and that gives you uh, the product of z 1 plus z 2 
times by the properties of conjugation z 1 bar plus z 2 bar. Okay. So, uh, when you multiply this out you get z 1 z 1 bar plus z 2 z 2 bar uh, plus z 1 z 2 bar plus z 2 z 1 bar. Uh, this we know is the modulus of z 1 squared and this is the modulus of z 2 squared by the previous properties okay. and then uh, z 1 z 2 bar can be uh, z 2 z 1 bar can be seen as z 1 z 2 bar conjugate. So, I will write that down plus this second term can be seen as z 1 z 2 bar it is the conjugate of this term. Okay. So, a number plus its conjugate uh, is equal to uh, the twice the real part that is by the previous properties. So, this is plus twice the real part of the com complex number z 1 z 2 bar okay. and then this by the by uh, property we saw previously is less than or equal to modulus of z 1 squared plus modulus of z 2 squared plus well the real part is less than or equal to uh, the absolute value of the real part which in turn is less than or equal to the modulus of the complex number z 1 z 2 bar okay. and then once again the modulus divides over product. So, distributes over the product. So, this is less than or equal to uh, well this is equal to 2 times modulus of z 1 uh, times modulus of z 2 bar okay. and then uh, the modulus of a complex number is equal to the modulus of its conjugate. So, this gives us z 1 squared mod z 1 squared plus mod z 2 squared plus 2 times mod z 1 times mod z 2. Okay, that is because uh, mod z is equal to mod z z bar. Please verify this again okay. and this in turn uh, is equal to the modulus of z 1 squared plus the modulus of z 2 squared plus 2 times the modulus of z 1 times the modulus of z 2. Uh, well, the modulus of uh, complex number is equal to the modulus of its conjugate. Please verify this fact. Okay. So, this directly follows from the definition of modulus and conjugate okay. and then this uh, is the square of the uh, modulus of z 1. Okay. So, modulus of z 1 plus modulus of z 2. Okay. So, this is sorry this is the square of modulus of z 1 plus modulus of z 2 it is the square of these two real numbers, okay, the, the sum of these two real numbers. Okay. So, since this modulus of z 1 plus z 2 is a real number, okay, the square of this is less than or equal to the square of this. Uh, so, we conclude that the modulus of z 1 plus z 2, since both these are positive real numbers uh, or non-negative real numbers, um, the this and this. Okay. So, we conclude this is less than or equal to modulus of z 1 plus modulus of z 2 which is the triangle inequality okay. and the other part of the statement uh, is an exercise to the viewer. Okay. So, this note I will stop here. Mm -hmm.